In this lecture, we are going to do a little speed test to measure exactly how much faster NumPy is compared to regular Python lists in terms of the dot product. Now, this lecture doesn't include any new code, so I'm not going to suggest that you code along since we've already covered how to do everything in this lecture. Of course, if you want to try to code this yourself, you are more than welcome to. The only additional code we have is to measure how long it takes for each loop to run. So here's the idea. We're going to calculate the dot product using both methods 100,000 times. And when we're done, we're going to calculate the ratio between the time it took with lists versus the time it took with NumPy arrays. This will tell us how many times faster NumPy is than regular Python lists. So let's run this code. Okay, so it's about 68 times faster. Let's run it again to make sure that wasn't a fluke. Okay, so this time it's about 66 times faster. Let's run it one more time. Okay, so this time it was about 61 times faster. So you can see that these results are pretty consistent. Using NumPy arrays is orders of magnitude faster than using Python lists for the dot product. As an exercise, you might want to try list comprehensions to see if they improve the results for regular Python. Now, after all this, you might wonder, it's pretty obvious that if I have two vectors, I'm not going to do a for loop when calling the dot function is clearly easier. Sure, it may be faster and that's nice, but why the heck would you write this big long for loop in the first place when you can just call a single function and it does the same thing? Well, the key is you have to think ahead. Obviously, in this case, it's pretty clear that you wouldn't use a for loop. But what if you have an equation like this? The natural approach when you see a summation is to do a loop. In fact, if that's not your natural inclination, then probably something is very strange about the way you program. And so this isn't a lesson of, if you see two vectors and you want to take the dot product, don't do a for loop. That's already pretty obvious. Instead, the lesson is really for these more complicated situations where it's not obvious at all how you can avoid having a for loop. So keeping the idea in mind that you want to avoid for loops, even if it means a significant amount of work for you, is the real challenge. 